This is my Chanel Classic Double Flab Bag, size medium, in silver tone hardware, stuffed to the brim. It's very heavy right now. I'm gonna show you what's in my bag. Even without anything in it, this bag is pretty weighty. It's got this heavy shoulder chain. Let's look inside. So it's called the double flap because it's got one flap and then a second flap here, which is not secured because my e-reader is in the way. <laughs> We're gonna look at that in a second. Um, an interesting thing to note is that when both flaps are closed, you actually don't have the capacity to go up to this flap. Your capacity only goes to the inner flap. Does that make sense? Okay, I really overloaded it. So you'll see first here, there is this flap for letters or I don't know what it would be for, but I actually have my e-reader in there and I'm looking up some cruel work embroidery. I've been really into hand embroidery lately. I mentioned this in my last video where I've got the speedy Louis Vuitton and we look inside. I always have this with me. So this is a Kobo. And a lot of you told me that the Kindle is actually more popular in the US. As I said then, the Kobo is a bit more popular, I think here in Canada, because well, our biggest bookstore, Indigo, uh, supports the Kobo. And for a lot of us, our public libraries also support the Kobo. So this is actually a library book. So you've got the two flap situation, right? This zipper up here, it's almost like a secret compartment. It's not very deep. I never put anything in here. Uh, maybe if I had a loose house key, that might be where I choose to keep it just so it's not jingle jangling around inside the bag. All right, so let me show you. Here's a look in. I cannot and do not keep my sunglasses in here because the sunglasses just take up way too much room. So if I'm wearing my sunglasses and I have this, I just perch them on top of my head or I just stick them in my shirt. One thing that's interesting too is like, it's kind of a struggle. These flaps really wanna close even after having this for a long time now. It's a highly structured bag and it has a tendency to wanna stay structured. All right, so keys, just regular house keys, nothing special about these. Purell hand sanitizer. I wish I had a smaller bottle, but I always have this with me. Um, Purell is my favorite of all the different hand sanitizers. To me, it just has the nicest texture when it's dried down and it doesn't have any scent either, which I appreciate because as much as I love perfumes, I never like hand sanitizer fragrances. They all smell bad to me. Maybe it's the mix of how they're formulated with alcohol. They all smell foul. I've never ever smelled one that I like, so unscented all the way. However, speaking of scents, I do carry a perfume with me for on the go touch ups. This is from Scent Bird. Let me put this down here for a second. And this is so cool. Um, this is not sponsored by Scent Bird, but I'm sure you've seen a lot of other YouTubers be sponsored by Scent Bird. They did send me some fragrances though a while ago, um, just in PR. Hey, this stuff is legit. And if there's fragrances you don't want to commit to a whole bottle, definitely look them up. This is Joe Malone's Joe Loves, which is an interesting citrus combo smell. But look at this. So the cool thing about these is they're magnetic inside. And so inside this case is the tube. And I love that it's got the case outside of it to, oh my gosh, that smells so good. Is this Joe Loves? Yeah, it's Joe Loves. Oh, it smells amazing. It's got this wonderful plastic case to not only protect it. So not only does that snap on really securely, I've never had it open. I've traveled with it. It's got a little locking mechanism here too. So I can vouch for Scentbird if it's something you are thinking about. All the fragrances are authentic, especially if you're in the US, it's very reasonable. If I'm Canadian and so a lot of these things cost a bit more to import over here, but yeah, Scentbird, two thumbs up. Okay, you guys, I'm actually filming on my phone. So this is not the phone I use right now. So use your imagination here with me. This is an older one that I've hung on to. Okay, if I wanna take my phone with me, I actually take the case off of it because I use the case and I use a pop socket and that makes the whole thing really thick because I like to use a thick case and it just takes up too much space inside the bag. So I deshell it from its case and I just, I put it in naked like this and it just takes up much less room with a much slimmer profile when I do that. So yes, of course, cell phone, that's not my phone, but just pretend it is. The next thing I bought in here is Darfen and Troll sunscreen. Oh, I love this sunscreen so much. It just is very, it's quite hard to find. It's not the easiest to find. My friend bought, brought me this one from France. It's SPF 50. It gives you such a nice dew. It is just really pretty under makeup. So I have it with me for touch-ups on my makeup free days. Some people put sunscreen over makeup. I've never tried that, but maybe I need to start thinking about finding one. I don't, I don't know if this one will do that. I don't know the whole mechanism of how you put sunscreen over makeup, but one of these days this summer, I am gonna look into it and do the same because I, you know, obviously don't wanna to get too much color or get burned. 
heaven forbid, but when I use SPF 50, that usually lasts me the whole day. I don't have to reapply because luckily I'm not someone who sweats that much. Okay. TMI, right? Okay. The next thing I've got in here is just a car key. Again, loose. I don't keep my car key on my set of keys. I spoke about this in a previous video as well because I don't take my car out that much. Uh, I'm lucky enough to live in a city near small businesses, shops, grocery stores, bakeries, uh, restaurants, my gym, you name it. I don't, I walk to all those places. I don't take the car. I take the car out every once in a while. You know, we usually use it to get groceries or go to the mall to do some shopping uh, or go to visit my parents. But otherwise it is just parked in our garage most of the time. So I just leave this separate and I don't generally take it with me. However, sometimes I do. Then I've got my trusty AirPods. I do love these. I know they look kind of silly, but my goodness, I am a podcast absolute addict. I love listening to podcasts. Anytime I have spare time and I'm not like reading on my Kobo, I am listening to a podcast. I found one called The Rest is History, which is a very heavy on the European history, which I love. I'm actually a European studies major from back in the day the many, many, many moons ago when I graduated from university, that was my degree. And I still love it. It's actually a subject I'm still drawn to even after all these years, which is kind of nice. So let's see what else is in here. So there's this flap that I told you about and yeah, nothing else in there. Not much else in here. Let me show you. <laughs> it's hard to show what's inside, but there's just not a huge amount of capacity in these bags. I think they're very much for the look and for when you're, and for when you're kind of traveling light. If I were airplane traveling, I would just use this as the wallet. I would put the cards probably in this, one of these pouches here and just basically treat it as a wallet. Again, as I said, nothing in here. And let's just check that I didn't forget anything in this back pocket here. No, what I would normally put in here is maybe a card that I need quite a bit of like a transit card or maybe a credit card. I don't know, that's probably asking for trouble in terms of getting pickpocketed or something like that. But I am actually very cautious about where I wear this bag. I don't flaunt it. I don't wear it places where I think I'm not going to be safe. Um, this is very much a going to the restaurant, going to a special occasion kind of bag for me. Going somewhere where I really want to dress up, take the look up a notch, which is generally not on the subway system, as you can imagine. Or, you know, a night out of drinking or something like that, which I don't do anymore at my advanced age. But once upon a time, I might have in which case I would not have taken this bag with me. I think a lot of people covet this bag. A lot of younger people own this bag without knowing any of the history behind it, but I always think it's worth a small dig into anyway, to just understand some of the basics of what is behind this very, very popular, pricey Chanel handbag. And I'm a history lover, so I love to share details like that with you guys. All right, well, I almost dropped. <laughs> I really like this bag and I will give you a really quick one minute history of Chanel handbags, what's going on with them right now. So this handbag was released in 1955. It was the first one from Chanel to feature a shoulder strap. It was called the 2.55 back then. And I think in the eighties, they changed the name to just like the classic double flat bag or the classic Chanel flat bag. The whole brand of Chanel as associated with Coco Chanel almost died. By the time that the 80s rolled around, this was a very fusty brand. And the person who revived it is none other than Karl Lagerfeld, who is someone with his own problematic history. But I think we can say one thing, which is that he was extremely successful in reviving the Chanel brand and making it youthful again, because it was pretty dusty by the time the 80s came around. It was strictly a ladies who lunch Upper East Side, you know, over 60 kind of brand. He completely reinvented it and made it more youthful and made it more appealing to all kinds of people. For those of you who think that the Chanel family still owns Chanel, they do not. So there's a huge kind of plot twist history of what happened with Coco Chanel and her owning of the brand. She tried to double cross her investors and use some of the laws around the time of World War II, um, anti-Jewish laws to take control back from people that had invested in part owned her company, the Wertheimer family specifically. And so they got her back and they ended up owning it. And so now it is owned by the French Jewish family called the Wertheimers. So it is not owned by Chanel. So people think that it still is, or it's like somehow her heirs. Some people think she had children, she did not. It's a privately owned company owned by the Wertheimer family who are based in France. She tried to double cross them. She failed. They gained control of it after the war and they continue to own Chanel privately. So when you are purchasing Chanel, you may be thinking it's going into Coco Chanel's coffers. It is not. Hope you found that interesting. If you did like this video and you felt you learned something or it was just fun to look at my strange assortment of belongings, please do give this video a thumbs up. 
consider subscribing and we'll see you on the next video. I'll put up another luxury handbag video for you to watch now.